Okay, so get this. Today we are diving into like actual dinosaur footprints. Oh, really? Yeah. No bones about, well, there are probably some bones around somewhere, but we're talking about the Isle of Skye in Scotland. Isle of Skye. Okay. I've heard of it. Beautiful, right? Absolutely stunning, but it's more than just scenery. Imagine like rocky beaches, crashing waves, but those beaches, they hold secrets from millions of years ago, traces of dinosaurs frozen in time. That's way cooler than bones in a museum. You're walking where they walked. Exactly. And we've got some amazing research and discoveries about these footprints. So let's um, let's just jump right in. You ready? I am. Hit me with those dino facts. Okay, so picture this. 2001, two people just walking their dogs on Ancorn Beach. Sounds pretty ordinary so far. Right? And bam, dinosaur footprints. No way. Just like that. Just like that. Apparently, one of them nearly stepped right on a print. Can you imagine? You're thinking, oh, nice day for a walk, and boom, Jurassic Park. That's incredible. What a find. It was huge. Put Sky on the map for paleontologists. Before that, no one really knew it was a dinosaur hotspot. So these footprints, though, they're not just cool to look at. They're what we call ecnofossils, and they give us a totally different perspective than bones. Different how? Well, bones. They tell us about the dinosaur itself, its anatomy, maybe how it died. Footprints. They're a moment in time, a snapshot of that dinosaur's behavior. Oh, I see. So, like, was it running, walking, big steps, or small? Exactly. We can learn about their size, speed, maybe even their mood that day. Mm. Was it a chill brontosaurus just munching on ferns? Or was it booking it from a T-Rex? Okay, now I'm really picturing myself on this prehistoric tour. Let's go then. First stop has to be Ann Corrin, right where it all began. Back to the dog walkers beach. I love it. And what's amazing is it's not some, you know, remote island you need a helicopter to reach. Please tell me it's not closed off for research. No, you can totally go there yourself. Preferably at low tide, of course, unless you want a dinosaurian swim. I think I'll stick to solid ground, thanks. Good choice. But seriously, can you imagine being there, seeing those prints emerge as the tide goes out? Talk about a blast from the past. Millions of years, just gone. And then there's Score Bay. Score Bay, what's there? This is where things get really big. We're talking sauropods, those long-necked giants. Ah, uh, the gentle giants. Yeah. Like a Brachiosaurus or Apatosaurus. Exactly. Those massive herbivores just lumbering along, munching on prehistoric ferns, totally unaware that millions of years later, we'd be geeking out over their footprints. And Score Bay is special because... Because it's home to the largest dinosaur trackway in Scotland. These giants really made their mark, literally. Imagine standing there knowing that beneath your feet lies a path walked by creatures larger than buses. It gives me goosebumps. That's amazing. Okay, you mentioned one more spot, the one for the adventurous types. Oh, yeah, okay. Rupan Bratharian, or Brothers Point. It's a bit of a hike, but so worth it. Stunning views, but also dinosaur diversity. Diversity, you mean? We're talking sauropods and the theropods. Wait, so both plant eaters and meat eaters? In the same place? Yep. Imagine the scene, giant long necks munching away, while maybe a sneaky predator stalks nearby, leaving its own distinct footprints behind. That's incredible. Finding both predator and prey footprints together is like hitting the paleontological jackpot. It's not just about individual dinosaurs anymore. It's about the whole ecosystem, the interactions, the food chain. Exactly. It paints such a vivid picture of what life was like back then. So to our listeners, if you ever get the chance to visit the Isle of Skye, and you really should make sure to add dinosaur footprint hunting to your itinerary. But remember, it's more than just snapping some pics for Instagram. Right. It's about engaging with the science and the history. Totally. Like, check the tide schedules, maybe even hire a local guide. And don't forget the information boards. Mm. They might seem boring, but they provide context. It's true. It's like the difference between um, like tasting plain pasta versus a gourmet pasta dish. Perfect analogy. It's about appreciating all the ingredients that make the experience so rich and flavorful. We can learn so much from these footprints, the type of terrain, the climate, even subtle dinosaur behaviors. Like the depth of a footprint can tell us if the ground was muddy or firm. The spacing between prints can indicate how fast the dinosaur was moving. Amazing. It's like piecing together a puzzle, but the pieces are millions of years old. Exactly. And the best part, we're only just scratching the surface. Who knows what other secrets are still out there, just waiting to be discovered. So as you stand on those beaches, looking out at the waves... Just imagine, what else might be hidden beneath the surface waiting for us to find it? 